Y'all already know what it is, Jay Williams, Let's Live Life, and we're back. Before we even get into today's story, I gotta tell y'all about my day. And some of yesterday, I gotta share this with y'all, for real. So I bought a truck over the weekend. Picture of the truck, nothing special. 2006 Ford F-150. You know, the 5.4 Triton work truck. Guy tells me it's got an exhaust leak. I start it up. Yeah, it definitely's got an exhaust leak. Might need some coil packs and spark plugs, right? So I'll take it and get those, you know, changed up. I take the truck yesterday morning, drop it off at old Tony's Muffler of Bra Rock. Shout out to the guys up at Tony's Muffler. Y'all did a great job. Tony asked me, hey, what you want to do? I said, it's got an exhaust leak. Tony, I need to uh, get the leak fixed. He said, why don't you just put dual exhaust on this truck? I said, how much is it going to cost? $375. We supply everything. I said, it's a good deal. Hell yeah, I'll do that. That keeps me from having to pay for the repairs. I'm going to have to pay for it anyway. They just cut the stuff out, replace it, and put two exhausts you know, coming out the back. Tony calls me later around lunch. Hey, it ain't an exhaust leak. I said, it's not. What is it? Somebody cut the Cadillac converter off the truck and just put a coupling on. Huh. I said, yeah, that's great. How much is that going to cost? I put a new Cadillac converter on it, you know, 325 for the Cadillac converter and everything. I said, all right. So I ended up spending 700 and some dollars, right? Already. And I still got to do the coils and the plugs on the truck. That's just, you know, that comes with life. People do grimy shit. Somebody cut the Cadillac convert off the truck, sold it, whatever. Part of my job that I don't like, for y'all that don't know or new to the channel, this is Jay Williams, Let's Live Life. I also own and operate JHW Construction, Renovations, Incorporated. I flip houses. I have investors. They buy houses. We go in, do whatever's got to be done, make them beautiful again. They get resold or rented. <sighs> With doing this, my investors have a lot of rental properties. People get evicted. When they get evicted, with me being the company owner, I have to go there and change out the locks and make sure that the house is secured so nobody can get back in. You know, if you don't pay your bills, fall on hard times, whatever, <coughs> you lose your home. Don't pay your rent, you gotta move. So I gotta go out there for the first time in my life I have to interact with the police. I'm there, the sheriff and them show up. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? I'm just here to drill the locks out of the doors lock, put new locks on, lock the windows and leave, right? So my first house is off Blue Ridge. <laughs> Blue Ridge Avenue over in Fulton Hill. That was at nine o'clock this morning. Richmond City Police comes out, two cops come out. I open the house up, drill out the lock. They go through, make sure nobody's in there. People don't like to get evicted. You know, they might punch in your face, open fire, and your cops go in. Then they leave. I've had kids come up to me before and ask me, why are you evicting us? And I'm like, what do you say to a four or five-year-old kid that wants to know why you're taking their home from them? I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm just changing the locks. I don't have anything to do with the eviction process. Well, why do we got to move? That wasn't this morning. This is in the past. And there's really no answer you can get for that. All I can say is, Hey, look, sweetie, or, or little man, whatever it may be, I don't know. That's something you got to talk to your mommy and daddy about. I just told you, come put new locks on, I come put new locks on. I get to Blue Ridge Avenue this morning. First sign that it's going to be the start to a shitty day. As I'm standing outside on the front porch and the two cops are going through the door, I'm looking, and there's roaches crawling on the brick outside this house. There is roaches outside this house. Let me say it again. There are roaches crawling on the outside of the house. I step into the house. The cops are done with their job. I'm like, all right. I go in. The smell is so bad that I start, like, gagging. I come out, put a mask on, and I tie a shirt around my face. I go back in. I change out the locks, and I'm like, did somebody not flush the toilet before they leave? I went in the bathroom and looked. And somebody had took a Donkey Kong size shit right in the tub. If you're watching and you live at that house on Blue Ridge that I flipped today, that blue house, 
and you took a shit in the tub, first of all, ew. Second of all, you're nasty, trifling. Third of all, you need to get your ass checked out. The human body is not supposed to push out anything that big. You need to either go see a doctor or get into the line of porn. Because what you left in that tub is, that's, that's not humanly possible. Like you took a whole entire rhinoceros shit right in the tub to be spiteful. Y'all step on cigarettes where you live and put them out in the hallway. Just throw Mickey cans all over the house. Like y'all are trifling. But 100% get your ass checked out. Like, uh, what? Where, where do they do that at? No wonder your trifling ass got evicted. Who shits in the tub? I just left another eviction out in Henrico off Nine Mile Road. Fat white sheriff there. Never seen no action in his life. It's just an eviction, homeboy. It's not that serious. This dude, I tell him, check the side door. He checks the front door, back door. It's locked. Check the side door. It's going to be locked, too. I walked up, turned the door knob. Before I can go in, the police have to go in, clear the house. He goes in. Boom, kicks the door open. Got his gun out. Here I go, police. Like, we just walked into a meth lab where the cartel is supposed to be here. Bro, this is just an eviction. Why do you have your gun out? What if a kid jumped around from a corner and said, boom. Bum. People do too much Between the huh, I'm guessing Jelly bean body shaped individual That shit in that tub And Deputy Doofy Don't bother me while I'm cleaning my room Sweeping the house like we were about to find Ben Laden in the back bedroom It's been an eventful day With plenty more hours to go Enough of that Let's go ahead and get into the purpose of today's video. Some of the most petty fights I've seen while locked up. I saw a lot of petty fights. Guys are very petty. You'd be surprised how a guy that steals from food line and brings stuff back to make a living and then goes and smokes crack has all these morals and principles now that he's locked up. A man that sells his kids diapers and cuts Cadillac converters off trucks. It's now got all these morals or principles when he's locked up. Everybody's got, you ain't going to disrespect me, I'm a man just like you. Now, you might be a man, but you're not just like me. Principles, principles, principles. Today, we'll get into some of the pettiest fights I've seen while incarcerated. You nasty for shitting in that tub. How you got roaches on the outside of your house? They ain't even nothing to eat outside. The roaches done left your house looking for something to eat. I can't get over that shit, man. Anyways, let's get into the, na the uh, nastiest, pettiest fights I've seen while locked up. Y'all know I done seen it, know I done lived it, now let's relive it. Now with today's stories, there's going to be some breakdowns of the jail process, of the coming in process, the feeding process, because these stories deal with that. You find yourself in trouble. Once you get put in handcuffs, you're going in the back of that cop car. All the jails I've been to, once you've been processed, you've taken your mug shot, fingerprinted, seeing if you got a bond or not, they put you into a holding area. Sometimes a holding area goes fast. Sometimes it goes slow. From there, you're going to go to where you're going to be housed. Out here, we call it the bullpen or the drunk tank. That's where you go at until you go into population. Some guys bond right out of the drunk tank and never make it to population. I've seen a lot of fights take place in the drunk tank. A lot of fights take place in the bullpen. I locked up many years ago on the weekend. I got locked up for DUI. First and only time ever. Do not condone drinking and driving. It's some stupid shit. Coming down the interstate that night, Got one of my homeboys in the passenger seat, one in the back. We're lit, big lit, super lit. I'm driving down the interstate doing God knows how fast I'm going. I wasn't speeding, but I mean, it felt like I was going a million miles an hour. Drinking and driving, man. Something I should never do, none of y'all should ever do. You'll hurt somebody, hurt yourself, 
die or end your dumb ass up in jail. Anyway, I've been drinking all day. Got this bottle of Jack D, big bottle of Jack, sitting right in the passenger seat, right? I'm in a Dodge Neon, little ass car, right? Getting it, the music bumping, my homeboy's in the car just driving. This is his chick's car. I reach over, hit the bottle of Jack D, glue, 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 glue. Take me a bunch of nice swigs. I could drink, you know, liquor like, huh, like that shit is Kool-Aid. I box it. I see a state trooper fly by me, right? And goes by, I'm like, Psha, you know, hit him with the middle finger, like, he don't see me, it's nighttime. I'm thinking, dummy, you know what I mean? By the time, blue lights in the rear view. So, oh, shit. I done flicked this cop off going by, not knowing there's one behind me. I'm swerving all over the road. I tell my homeboys, I'm going to jail. Oh, man, oh, man. Shut up. You're like, y'all going to jail or something. I'm going to jail. I'm driving this car. I ain't got no license. No big-ass bottle of liquor sitting there. Like, I am drunk. Slumped. You know what I mean? <laughs> I pull over the side. The cop gets up, comes up to the car. Wasn't no denying. Wasn't no lying. Wasn't no trying to get out of this. One of the few times I actually spoke to the police and was honest about what was going on. Not being honest would make me look like an idiot. He walks up to the car and I'm just sitting there. I can't hand this bottle back because he's going to see me. Got that bright ass spotlight pointed on us. Like the spotlight on the side is pointed through the back window. The red and blue lights are flashing and we're just sitting there, right? I still ain't even turned down the music. Music that the old Jeezy can't ban the snowman is playing, right? We're just sitting there with the Jeezy bump and he walks up. Taps on the window. I roll the window down. You know why I pulled you? Yup. Kind of steps back for a second. He said, well, you were swerving. Yup. Any reason why you were swerving? I said, because I'm drunk. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, excuse me? I said, because I'm drunk. Straight up. Like, he's going to get me out of his car anyway when he sees I ain't got no license registration. Got a driver's license registration on you? Nope. I ain't got no license. I ain't got no registration. I ain't got no proof of insurance. I ain't got nothing. Shines a light in the car. Passengers are now. Is that an open bottle? That's an open container of alcohol beside you? I said, yes, it is. He was like, what's your name? I told him my name. He wrote it down. He told me to turn the car off. No, nope. I turned the car off, handed him the keys. I put the keys out the window. He lays his keys on top of the car. He goes back to his car. Now he's going to check to see if I have warrants. He's sitting behind us in the car watching us. Sitting in his car. I know I'm going to jail, so I grab a bottle of Jack D. Start drinking. Why not? I mean, I'm going to jail. The fuck does it matter? He sees me. I see him get out, slam his car off, door all quick, put his big ass hat on, walks up, and I continue to hit the bottle. What do you think you're doing? So I'm drinking. You can't be drinking and I'm going to jail, man. You know what I mean? Miss me with all that bullshit. So I hit it some more. So I get out the car, put the cap on the bottle, sit it back down. I get out and I'm staggering, right? Why would you be drinking and driving? Why would you be driving a vehicle if you're this drunk? And I'm a smart ass. I got punchlines for days. I said, you want me to be honest? He was like, yeah. I was like, you want to know why I'm drinking and driving? He was like, that's good. Uh, yeah, I'd like to know what's going through your mind. I said, because uh, I'm too damn drunk to walk. He kind of looked at me and shook his head like, I can't believe this dude just said that. Like, I can't believe this dude just hit this bottle of liquor in front of me. He said, you know you're going to jail, right? I said, yeah. Yeah, I know I'm going to jail, man. My homeboys know what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? They not worried about me going to jail, they worried about how the hell they're gonna get home. They're stuck on the side of the interstate. He goes ahead, puts me in the cuffs me, searches me. I'm gonna find anything in the vehicle. I said, just a bottle of Jack Daniels in the front seat. More cops are showing up, they search the vehicle. Off the jail I go. This is where the story starts. My two homeboys, they leave them on the side of the road, tell them good luck. They hook the truck, they hook the car up to the back of the tow truck drive off with it, impound the car, right? They process me through, mug shot, fingerprints, going in the drunk team. I'm in there and I'm not, you know, I'm not causing no problems, but I'm not causing no noise. I'm actually just drunk to the point that I'm just kind of like, oh shit. I'm not supposed to be awake at this point. I'm supposed to be asleep. But you get to that point where you've been awake too long and you was drunk, so now you're starting to feel the effects of coming down off the being drunk. I'm sitting in the drunk tank. 
And this white dude comes in and he's, I thought I was drunk. That dude was super drunk. He comes in the drunk tank and he's arguing with the guards, making all this noise. Big old rusty, dusty ass beard, long, you know, greasy hair. They push him on in there, right? He comes in, all right, now, huh? running his mouth. I got locked up at the bar for fighting with some black boys. I'm looking around like, I hope he uh, chills with that black boy shit because uh, this ain't the place for him to start popping off with his mouth, right? He does not stop. He continues. He's dropping the N-bomb. He's saying words he should not ever be saying out his mouth. And there's some dudes in there that are not feeling this dude, right? When I mean not feeling him, like he's saying shit and a, couple of, a lot of these dudes ain't drunk. They got pulled over, got gun charges, robbery charges, murder charges, whatever. That dude's in here from every caliber in the drunk tank, right? And dude's telling him, man, shut your drunk ass up. Go sit down somewhere, right? You would think that's why he got beat up. It's not why he got beat up. He wants to argue with these dudes on race and the difference in races and blacks and whites and Mexicans and he's like just one of those drunk belligerent dudes you like if you was in the free world you'd get away from before you hurt right so dudes are telling him look man you need to go on somewhere lay down sleep that shit off and you get fucked up in here somebody's gonna beat your ass in here right oh ain't nobody gonna do nothing to me I already got into it with several of them tonight I done beat up several of y'all don't nobody wanna see me don't nobody want no problems I don't care I don't give a fuck and I'm just thinking man they're about to knock all this dude's teeth out of his mouth right but there's another dude laying there on the floor. There are no beds in here. They give you a mat, a wool blanket, and a sheet. You throw that mat on the floor in here. If there's a place to lay it, there's usually not. Usually, you're just going to put that shit in the corner and sit on it because there's nowhere to lay down, right? And somebody's going to have to move so I can roll my mat out. I'm going to sleep tonight. He's staggering. And as he's staggering, there's a Spanish dude laying on the ground. The Spanish dude is on his mat, and he's got his wool blanket pulled up over his head, and he's like kind of in a cocoon, like a cocoon, laying there on his mat, right? Drunk dude walks by, staggers, trips, and kicks this dude right in his face while he's laying there on his mat. You would have thought a Tasmanian devil came up out of that blanket. I ain't never seen nobody in my life respond, come up out of a blanket, and hit somebody that fast. No sooner than his foot connected as he was walking, stumbling, not paying attention, kicked that Mexican in the face. That Mexican not only threw that blanket off, not only springboarded, jumped up off the mat, but just boom, 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 boom. Boom, slumped the old man upside the wall. Laid this old, you know, Rolling Stones, hippie looking white dude upside the wall, all messed up. Dude hits the wall, boom. Thought the wall about knocked his ass all the way out. He slides down the wall. And the Mexican's looking around, like, trying to figure, like, what just happened to me? I know this dude just, you know, kicked me in the face. The dude's just still standing there when the Mexican hopped up, right? The Mexican dude runs up, boots him in his face. Boom! With a pair of shower shoes on. If y'all don't know what shower shoes are, kicks him in the face with his hard-ass shower shoes. Boom! Knocked all the drunk right out the man. Man sat there holding his face. <sighs> Didn't say a word. I go ahead and find me a spot go to sleep, right? Next morning rolls around. I hear the dude sitting, the old man, the old white dude sitting over there in the corner, and he wakes up. Uh, uh, uh. Got this big ass knot on his head from where he hit the wall. All these knots and whelps all over his face where Mexican put hands all over him, right? Never believe what dude said. Am I in jail? Did the cops beat me up? He didn't even remember getting beat up by the Mexican. He didn't remember all those racist remarks he made to those, those dudes that were in the drunk tank with us, right? Dudes told him, yeah, you done sobered up now. Huh? We should beat your ass. Why? why what, what, what's going on? What, what happened? What happened? Whole different dude. He ended up bonding out and going home, and I ended up going over to another tier. Shout out to the Mexican, man. For real. Dude, boy, you had to be related to Oscar De La Hoya. Piece the shit out of him. And kick somebody with a shower shoe? That was impressive, man. I would have took them shits off, but that was impressive to kick him with a shower shoe. Let's get into the next one.
I've told y'all in the past, I don't like sports. I like basketball, I like baseball. I do not like football. I used to be a big football fan. Prison and jail, combined with idiots, ruined football for me. Many, many years were spent. Roll these windows up, try to keep some of this AC. It says it's 100, 140 degrees in here, that's crazy. Idiots ruined it. I lived in front of the TV in prison that was the sports TV. That TV stayed on ESPN 24 hours a day or it stayed on something sports related. Football season is chaotic in prison. Whether it be from the gambling, whether it be from dudes running around acting like morons, Screaming their team's name running around like this dude is sending him money for commissary or that's his kid on TV And then the arguing The arguing being the main reason I started to dislike football As far back as I can remember Dudes have argued over football in prison and in jail Let's go back in time 21 years back in time Year 2000 I'm in jail. Tennessee Titans playing the Rams. Super Bowl. Everybody's making their meals. Everybody's mealing up together, making their Super Bowl meal. Dude's got chips with the cheese on it, and the soup's on top, and the pickles chopped up, and the summer sausage smothered, and they got the you know jail nacho popping off. Guys got all the different concoctions going on, making cups of tang. They got the Seroquel pills they done saved up that they done crushed up and put inside the tank. So it's like syrup. Super Bowl. Let's go. Guys love to argue. Back to why I hate football. You got this one dude out there telling everybody, man, I've always been a Titans fan since day one. No, 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 no. Arguing with dudes. Got another dude. You a bandwagon rider. I'm a Titans fan. You're not really a Titans fan. They get into the football trivia. Oh, yeah? Who was the quarterback at such and such, such, such? Dude answer. And dude asked that dude question. Dude wouldn't really know the answer. These guys are arguing like two females over a man. Over the Tennessee Titans. Like going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? The game is going on, we get to halftime, and they're still arguing about players. And it's to the point now, other people are looking like, man, these two dudes are ruining the game. Like, they're hype, running around, yelling, yelling at each other, getting each other's face. Ooh, ooh, talking shit, right? We get towards the end of the game, and the one dude, there's two dudes now, it's done went from talking shit about the who's the biggest Titans fan and who used to play here and what college this guy came from to where we can see dude's was going to end up getting a fight over who plays for the Tennessee Titans, right? Dude tells him, I'm about tired of hearing your fucking mouth. This is the dude that really don't know what the hell he's talking about. Dude's shitting on him when it comes to football trivia, right? I'm about tired of hearing your fucking mouth, man. You say anything else to me about the Titans, anything else about football, I'm going to punch you in your fucking face, right? We all sitting there, and you also, you got the dudes in jail. There's a lot of these dudes that are like third graders. Ooh, he say go punch you in your shit. Oh, you go to that dude just carry you like that? It's just like that. Guys, damn, man, if he said, man, can't believe he said that to you. Damn, he go punch, you go punch a man in his face. Damn, he said he go punch the man in the face. Dude looking around like, you go punch who? I'm going to punch you in your face. You say anything else to me about football, right? Dude's all right, all right, all right. Walks off. Now these two are separated. Still watching the game, right? Game ends. The one dude is, you know, still getting all hype and stuff. The dude that told dude he punched him in the face. The other dude's feeling his type of way because dude's done egged him. Damn, homeboy says he's going to punch you in your face. You ain't going to do nothing about it. Like, man, can I punch you in the face? Because you clearly ain't going to stand up for yourself. Dude's just saying little things to egg him on, right? So the one dude that made the threat was sitting there. And he had him a big old nacho thing made out that he had beside him. Had his cup of tang sitting there with the syrup, quill in it, his syrup, you know what I mean? Jail syrup. Bunch of pills mixed in. It makes you kind of woozy. Picks his nachos up. And he's got the little radio because you got to tune the radio to a certain channel 
to hear the TV. The TV ain't got no speakers. So if you ain't got a radio, those little earbuds, you can't hear the TV. Picks this stuff up, and all you hear is feet. Come running. A duty threatened, runs up on him and hits him. Boom! Like the shit, you ever seen one of those punches get thrown that's almost in slow motion? This guy had walked over to his cell, and when people were still making slick comments, decided I'm gonna light his ass up for talking shit about me, schooling me on the Tennessee Titans. He runs, and we all watch him take off running. Like he's about to kick a field goal, about to punt the football. Runs about 60, 70 feet across the pod and hits that dude that made that threat. You ever seen somebody get hit and their head stay here, but their whole entire body, like they just fold, like their feet go sideways and they just, he ran up a hit dude, boom, the nachos, what's left of them, go everywhere. Dude's like stuck in time, boom, whole body shifted, smacked the floor. Grabbed him by his shirt, lifted him up, just started feeding him to him. Feeding him to him. Feeding him to him. Finished him off. Went over to the cell. Guards seen the whole thing. Two guards sitting up at the control desk. Packed all this stuff up. Goon squad comes running in. Other guards come running in. They go over to his cell. He walks over the door, turns around, puts his hands behind him. Yeah, I know I'm going to the hole. He deserved what he got. And they took him up out of there. Petty. How petty can you be? How do you look telling your people when they come to the visit on Sunday and you pick up that phone and y'all talk to each other through the glass and your kids show up? How do you look telling your people that you got punched in the face, knocked all the way out, and the shit beat out of you behind Super Bowl? Behind Super Bowl Sunday and the Tennessee Titans. How do you look? Part of the reason I don't like football. A lot of chaos and bad memories attached to football. Throw y'all one more story before we get out of here. I shouldn't have to say this, but you know I do. Some people don't understand. You don't play with a man's food. You don't touch a man's food. You don't lean over a man's food. You don't stretch over to pass something to somebody. Don't touch anything on his tray. Don't act like you're gonna touch anything on his tray. That is one of the quickest ways to get your ass whooped is messing with the next man's food especially if said man does not have any other food i could make a 10 part series out of watching guys fight over food watching situations where people got trashed and smashed and beat up behind prison food and jail food but in thinking about that i'm gonna give you this story that just came across as so petty to me it was petty borderline stupid on dude's behalf not everything they serve you is disgusting we used to get in the morning what they would call shit on the shingles in the real world in society that's biscuits and gravy we would get rolling rock in society that's hard boiled eggs right I liked the shit on the shingles it wasn't that bad I liked the chicken when we used to get chicken it wasn't that bad. Meat rock, wolf foot, donkey dick, three different names of things that are fed to you. You can use your imagination. If they call it a donkey dick, what it looks like, and we'll skip the whole what it tastes like part. Meat rock, meat that looks like a cooked rock. That's the it. <laughs> It's a whole bunch of other things that were left over from the week. They blend together, squirt out into a paste, and then bake. Wolf foot, very similar. Looks like somebody just chopped the damn wolf foot off that was brown and put it on your tray. I'm in the jail, and in the jail, at this time, the old jail I was in, they used to feed you in the, in the dorm you lived in. There was no tables. There's a couple tables up front, but dudes, these are like long metal tables. Dude sat there and played dominoes, played spades. You more or less got your tray. Three times a day, they're going to come through with this cart. You got an inmate that walks with the officer. They roll up to the bars. They open the bars and they scream in, child time. Sleep late, lose weight. Meaning your ass sleeps through this meal, you're going to go hungry. You're not going to see child till if it's the evening, you ain't going to see it till the next morning. It's the morning, you'll see it at lunch and at dinner. This particular train, I can't forget it because of what happened. 
bean tray. I don't eat bean trays. A lot of trays I wouldn't eat. Whatever. Call me bougie. Call me thinking I'm too good. Some of this, the beans I wouldn't especially mess with. I cracked and broke my back tooth on a rock. A rock in my beans one time. Eating my beans, chewing them up. Ah, the, oh, the fuck. Spit blood out, piece of tooth and a rock. I'm done with beans. No more beans for me, please, right? This day in particular, they got beans. I got commissary. I'm not eating the beans. The only thing I'm eating off the tray is the cornbread and the cookies. Somebody else can have my beans. And dudes would do that. Dudes would take the cookie and the cornbread and throw the trays up front. Let the guards and that little guy that walks around with the guards clean that shit up. Man, nasty ass bean tray. But they wanted that cornbread and they wanted them cookies, right? They were these cookies called duplex. They look like Oreos, but they're not Oreos for all my convicts. The guys that know what duplex cookies are. But it's one of the best desserts you get on the tray was them duplex cookies. Two little black cookies with the ice in them, right? Child time. Sleep late, lose weight. Get up. Get your child. A lot of guys ain't getting up for this. I don't want it. Hey, bring me the cookies. Hey, somebody grab the cornbread for me. I'm not going to tell nobody to grab my food. If I want my food, I'll come get it. Once you put your dick touches on it, I don't want it, man. I don't know where your nasty ass hands have been, right? But sometimes dudes will be like, hey, bring me the tray. Let me grab this off of you. Keep the beans, right? Dudes are throwing the trays, throwing the trays. We got a dude in the back, big dude, big white dude named Showtime. I don't know why they called him Showtime. I guess because he's supposed to be like the shit or whatever. Somebody yells back there, hey, Showtime, get up, come get your tray. Man, I don't want that shit. Throw that shit on the table, right? All right. Dude takes a tray, throws it on the table, opens it up, gets the cornbread, takes the cookies. Mind you, he just said, I don't want that shit. Throw it on the table. That means you don't want it. Whoever wants it, go get whatever you want. Everybody's eating. We're all eating our food now, right? I'd have made something else, some soups or something. Dudes are chowing down on the beans, eating the cornbread, the cookies. I see Showtime come off money this covers. He's on the bottom bunk. We're in the dorm. There's bunks everywhere. He's sitting there. And he's looking around. And his tray is sitting up there on the table. He adjusts himself. Puts his shower shoes on Makes his way to the front Now you got a bunch of little Gang dudes sitting at the table They got dominoes in the middle of space Played out Once they finish eating They go go back to the game Showtime's tray is sitting there right The dude that yelled up to Showtime they, Hey Showtime come get your tray Was well, Showtime's homeboy Somebody that kicked it with him Laughed with him, joked with him You know what I mean, was bidding with him Showtime comes up there, picks the tray up, walks back to his bunk, sits down, pops the tray open, sees the cookie and cornbread, gone. Who the fuck went in my tray and took my cornbread and my cookies? Don't nobody say nothing, but everybody heard him just say, I don't want it sitting on the table. His homeboy ain't said nothing. Everybody kind of keeps glancing at his homeboy like, hey man, tell your homeboy you took the cornbread and the cookies. He's about to spaz out. We don't all seen this, this dummy spaz out before. It's showtime. You know what I mean? Like, maybe that's how he got his name. Because he's always putting on a show. Fuck no. Nah. Y'all think y'all could just take shit from me? You want to take my shit? Take my shit. There's my commissary. Who took my shit? I don't know if his homeboy was shook. I don't know if his homeboy wanted to see shit get started. Showtime was heated. Showtime's I walked up front now. And he's looking at all the little gang members sitting there. Some of these dudes got several cookies on their tray. Some of them got several pieces of cornbread. And he's not talking to the person that stole from him. He's talking to everybody. I don't give a fuck who it is in here. I'll smash everybody in this bitch. Can't nobody take none from me. I'll beat the fuck out of anybody that steps up. You don't do that. Don't do that. You say to the mob that took my stuff, I'll trash you. Just goes out to whoever took my shit, I'll beat your ass. Not to anybody in here can get it. I don't care who it is. Now you just called everybody out over two dumbass duplex cookies and a piece of cornbread. 
He's like got the tray in his hand, the tray slung it over the bars, the beans done exploded, went all over the wall, and he still ran, swinging his arms around. I ain't playing, I ain't playing. I didn't see coming next what happened. When he threw the fucking beans, they hit the wall, the beans splatted back on a couple of them dudes sitting there at that table. Dudes is looking, they got white t shirts on, like, I got nasty ass beans on me. Show Thomas and Miller running his mouth, turns around, and this young, small, Skinny black dude hops up and open hand slaps Showtime on the side of his face. I'm talking one of those slow motion giant flying hand emojis on them jackass hands, like big inflatable Mickey Mouse hand just come across. Fire! Smack the shit out of Showtime. I'm thinking, ah, oh, here we go. Showtime about to pick this dude up. Dump him on his neck and beat his ass, right? Showtime backed up, grabbed his face. Dude slapped the dog shit out of Showtime. He backed up, grabbed his face, knocked all the gangster right out of him. Showtime said, you got that. You got that. My bad. My bad. I was just upset. I hype over the cookies and the cornbread. My bad. I don't want no problems. My bad. Took his big dumb ass back to the back. And sat on his bunk. All the rest of us are sitting there like. Dude just spat. He smacked fire from Showtime's ass. Like. Slapped his ass into another mood. How you slap somebody hard. So hard you change their mood. That man went from being angry and violent. To complacent and timid. He went from being a Rottweiler. To a pissy puppy. Showtime carried his ass to the back. And sat down on his bunk. His homeboy. Never told him that he took the cookies and the cornbread. Showtime ended up getting moved up out of there and moved to another pod. I don't know if he told the guards he needed to be moved, if he dropped a slip on himself to get himself out of there, if somebody else got him out of there. I don't know what happened. But within the next few days, Showtime got picked up off our tier and Showtime was moved over to another tier. The boy slapped that man so hard, he left bruises. Literally palm print and fingerprint bruises all the way across the side of his face over two cookies and a piece of cornbread. Petty ass shit. So that's that. Some of the most petty fights I've seen while locked up. There's plenty more. Sad people get that petty. It's even sadder when you get your whole mood changed by a hand. By a slap. You get beat up by somebody you stumbled across and kicked in the face. So many different things happen in the years of being incarcerated and watching stupidity. I, it doesn't shock me. Nothing shocks me no more. Like I told you, with the aliens twerking on top of the White House, wouldn't surprise me. Before we get out of here once again, you're nasty for shitting in that tub. You need Jesus. Allah, Buddha, whatever. You need help. But anyways... These jails, institutions, detention centers, they're all just crazy worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, I know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep you all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute.